Rotorua Tour in New Zealand, belong to the Molluscan genus Halitoids. This road is Lincoln and means sea bear. In New Zealand, we mainly farm blackfoot power. Blackfoot power is the most common species found in New Zealand. They are often in large cluster-like structures on rocks or in semi-shallow water. This makes for easy breeding. There are two main types of abalone farming. They are both land and sea farming. Land farming is when the fish is farmed in large tanks. They have water being continuously pumped through the tanks to keep the areas fresh and clean. This type of farming requires a lot of infrastructure and labour intensive work to keep the farms running and producing. When selecting where to build a land based farm, you need to consider the quality of wood supply and also where you can access the best power supplies. Many land based farms feed the abalone with artificial food. Some of these special seaweeds will account for combinations of these both. You can see an example of land based farming on my PowerPoint. Sea-based farming takes place in areas surrounded by seaweed and usually smooth, rocky coastlines. They are close to the shore so they can be easily accessed by the workers in boats. The fish are grown on bases that are attached to nets, which are attached to big pontoons to keep the nets afloat. This type of farming is not so labour intensive, but still requires a labour work component. This is because getting food and resources to the farm is not as difficult compared to land-based farming. Majority of the labour goes towards protecting the fish, especially the young ones. To, this is to prevent um, any unwanted predators killing or harming them. Many sea farms abalone feed as they would in the wild. This means they don't have to be fed manually. You can also see examples of sea-based abalone fishing farming on my PowerPoint. There are a range of different issues associated with abalone farming and its production system. Farm infrastructure. There is a lot of building and electricity put into farming, especially land-based, and this can cause many disturbing and upsetting noises and odours from the farm. This is an issue as the houses or companies that surround the area will be disturbed and could possibly complain. To keep huge amounts of water circulating through the breeding tanks, there needs to be a very high use of electricity, making it expensive to run the farm, as well as other costs for labour, food and equipment. There are also many issues with the security of the land and infrastructure. With having to build big farms, there will need to be a lot of cutting into land. For example, the coastline and other types of natural fish habitat. This can also cut into places people use for recreational use. This is an issue as it destroys the natural habitat, which will never recover. Waste management is another major issue associated with abalone farming. This mainly occurs when the products are being shared and processed. The waste consists of leftover shells and fish that cannot go through to market and keep throwing up as a result of bad conditions or being deceased. There are all issues, these are all issues people should consider when building an abalone farm. This could potentially harm the environment and the land it is used forever. One issue that is serious is associated with the packaging and processing to get the abalone through to market. When looking at abalone or power, we see it as a black fin, which is not that appealing. When looking at articles associated with these issues, I found out that when exporting the fish, many companies use the chemical called hydrolyte. This chemical and gone. This makes it look similar to other countries' abalone. This produces a major risk for the consumer and also the company that has produced the product. It will dampen their reputation and put a strain on fish sold locally. On my PowerPoint, you can
consistency an example of blood for power and power you would like in other countries. In conclusion, although ever money farming is potentially good for money for our countries, there are many issues associated with it, especially when exporting to other countries. The demand for our product is so high, but we are harming ourselves as well as the natural state of the fish to do this. And in the Tago Daily Times article, Seafood New Zealand spokesman John Carson said, Overseas consumers are used to eating white abalone. This just shows how in demand abalone is and what, and what companies will do to make people white and eat their food. 